Hey guys, Truck Driver 101. This is a Break 1-9 look review. So, what we're going to talk about is the Blood Sugar Solution uh, by Mark Hyman, MD. Um, basically, it's about losing weight and preventing disease through eating good, healthy foods. Uh, it's a good book, but there is a lot of liberal and, you know, douchey... You know, oh, if we all just get along and love one another, and man, if we just gave each other a hug. You know, it's like, the first starts out where he talks about, you know, all the prevention things and how companies and corporations. So basically, at the beginning of the book also, he starts telling you, it's not your fault. Literally, in the book, he says, at some point... It's not your fault, and let me tell you why. Because the blood sugar, the, the corporations have, have put this food sugars in this addictive properties, and, and it's in the food, and you don't even know that you're eating it. And I'm sitting there going, I have never picked up a bag of Doritos or I ate it at McDonald's and thought, oh my god, I am eating some healthy, healthy fucking food. I mean, this is delicious. Like, no, of course this food's unhealthy. They cooked it in 13 seconds, dude. What the hell do you expect? I just paid a dollar for a burger, a slice of bread, and, and, and toppings, plus I got a fry. I mean, you know, it's, there's a reality here of cheap food. But, anyway, continuing. And then at some point, before after he gets out of it, he tells you, you don't even know what you're doing. No, I know when I'm eating horribly. I know it. I, I'm, I'm very aware of it. I do. And the part that kills me is he keeps trying to tell you it's not your fault. The problem with that is, at the end of the book, he basically says you have the power. So which is it? Do I have the power or is it not my fault? Because if I don't have the power, if, I, if it's not my fault, then I need to have a couple corporations come read this book. This doesn't make sense for me to read it. Right, you know, I mean, what am I going to do if it's not my fault? Right, however, if it is my fault, then I guess I can fix it, huh? Yeah, like, obesity is your fault. You can fix your own obesity problems. <laughs> the thing that gets me about the whole book isn't so much that he tries to blame the universe, but it's that it becomes, it makes the book pointless and, like, preachy about something that is, that he has the cure. He has excellent ideas. But you really have to skip over all the preaching and bitching and moaning. The middle of the book is excellent. It talks about getting taken. The first part of the book is to go on a diet, prepare. So basically, really what you're doing is cutting out bread and dairy. Again, I'm doing that. I like the idea. See how it affects you. Um, after that, you turn around after you cut out bread and dairy. You turn around and you uh, you start eating more health, healthier foods, uncooked, you know, more like a raw food diet, but you do cook it. You can't cook on his diet. Uh, it basically is guiding you kind of towards the low glycemic index, plus he also gives you some hits, helps, and hints on, you know, avoiding uh, certain pollutants. You know, everybody knows cell phones and, you know, what type of fruits and vegetables absorb the most pesticides, that kind of stuff. That is all very helpful. And that's kind of the middle of the book. It's really good. And then you get to the end. And when we get back to the sermon, him and these damn sermons about how it ain't your fault and the company has done dumbness to us and we don't been confused and we don't. I mean, I swear blood was trickling right out of my chest because my bleeding heart liberalness was just coming out. I felt so bleeding hard. I mean, listen to it. Some of it has some helpful stuff, but 90% of that whole, you know, it ain't your fault in society needs to come together and understand that we are all spending time doing the wrong, don't, don't. Everybody knows unhealthy food is unhealthy. Nobody's that stupid. <laughs> but all in all, I will say the book and the advice is excellent. I have been doing it for a few weeks. I'm a fat dude. I can't give you health advice, but I will say this. The guy's health, health tips are excellent, and I feel great. And I've been cut, I didn't cut out bread completely. I haven't been able to do that 100%, but I have done it pretty much less than five. So I've had like maybe one couple slices of bread. That's about it. So um, the only thing I found, uh, if you're a trucker out there and you want to do this, 
if you go to Subway and you get those salads, be really, really careful because those salads do not have, they don't have a lot of calories in them. So you need to get something that's going to give you some calories so you can lose weight, you know, and, but at the same time, I mean, you know, get you some vegetables from there and everything because the, the, I, I ate a vegetable salad from Subway, just a little note out there for my guys out there trucking and, and that salad is like 50 calories. Man, I feel woozy as hell. <laughs> and and then I ate one with uh, some food in it. And I mean, man, you just start craving. So I've been eating almonds as a as a gap filler. But even that's not really good because you're not supposed to eat that many almonds. Um, so I'm trying to figure out like what I'm going to do. Today I, I had bananas and I had a veggie sub. And I ate the sub, but then I succumbed and I ate the bread. I ate, damn it, I ate the bread today. So, but I had enough calories though. I didn't get woozy. I didn't feel a little lightheaded. Um, so you know, but I gotta admit, I mean, I feel great. And you know, I think his his advice on giving up dairy and everything is good. I just think the guy needs to chill back with the whole "it ain't your fault" thing. I mean, at the end of the book, basically, he's telling you you have the power to change this. You know. You, you know, hell with the government and everybody else, man. Read this book, take the helpful advice that's in it, and change your life. I love the guy. Um, Mark is great, a great, great guy. But I have to admit, I have to say, I just don't agree with his liberal approach to blaming everybody. We bought this crap. We put this in our food. There's a part in it that really pisses me off when he starts talking about the children being advertised to. First of all, fast food companies have lost lots and lots of money in the last 10 years. Obesity comes from horrible foods. I will agree with that 100%. But a lot of obesity comes from the fact that we use too much technology. We have got to admit we use too much tech. If you don't, I mean, let's be honest. How many people do you not even go see because you got Facebook? How many people do you not talk to face to face and when you would have made an effort and burned some calories because you have a cell phone? I think you do just as much good getting on this diet and using your technology less. So I love this book and I and I give it a uh, um, I, if I well let's see I'll give it a rating let's see I won't I'll say seven out of ten and the only bad part is the sermons but. As far as kids going unhealth, back to that, as far as kids going bad health, excuse me, the only person's fault that is, is a parent's. And the reason that happened is back in the day, when I was a kid, we took away parents' rights. We took away, not and not their rights, but the blame. You know, in the 1970s, if you was a woman, and you had five babies by eight different men, by, um, <laughs> five babies by eight different men five babies by four different men you were a hoe and you were not to be celebrated and not to be loved if you were a man and you didn't take care of your family you were a piece of shit and you were not to be celebrated and not to be loved if you live with somebody and you didn't take your life serious you were not to be celebrated and not to be loved there was this consequence of social reality of your bad decisions consequences for it Today, if you are a parent <clears throat> and you do a, whole, a, toast of, a host of wrong things, people praise you. They say it's not your fault. You did the best you could. And that is the biggest problem. You need social blame. If you're fat, it's your fault. Change it. If your children are fat, that's your fault. Change it. And, and if we don't start teaching that to people... All we're going to do is continue to go back and forth. We went through this with smoking. We went through this with alcohol. And we'll go through it again and again and again. Because people who can take care of themselves will not fall for things like this. But people who sit around waiting on someone to save them will fall for it every single fucking time. You have to have something to stand for. This used to be what religion stood for. But then liberal America came and tore that away. So you think they would find something else to do. They keep thinking the government is going to come in and do it. But the government is only as strong as you. And if you hadn't abandoned religion, religion would have been strong and wouldn't social conscience. Right. But you abandoned it. That entire baby boomer generation after World War II abandoned religion. I mean, it's not it's nowhere near as strong as it used to be. 
And so now they want government, but nobody's making an effort to go into government. People are more people watching Bill Maher and think he's going to change something than there are actually running for government or paying attention who they vote for. Because you watch Bill Maher, you feel like you did something, you didn't do something, and then what do you get? Right, nothing. And it's no different than blaming corporations and companies. They only produce this crap because many years ago it was hard for people to gain weight. And secondly, we, 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 we allow liberals, feminists, and other people to turn cooking into some oppressive act. And sadly, it's a lost art in our country. But we only have ourselves to blame, and we can relearn our art. And it doesn't mean that you're a subservient, you know, lower, lesser form woman if you cook. No, it means you, you're healthy. Because when I go by a school, maybe this is just me, but what I see is a few fat boys and a crap load of fat girls. You can't even tell. It used to be back in the day when I was a kid, man, you could tell if a girl had a kid or not. Now I can't tell. I can't tell every little girl. Now I got a gut. And I mean, it's ridiculous. But you can't call the girl ugly. You can't say she's fat, right? You can't criticize the parents. You can't criticize the kids. So we criticize the school, which is not their responsibility. And then you go out and you criticize the government. But if we don't participate in the school or the government or the religious organizations, then when, exactly who is supposed to fix the problem? These are public organizations. Their job is to be a, 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 a structure for us to fill the void and get things done. You can't do that if, you know, everybody's all, you know, let someone else take care of it. You have to take care of it. You got to fight the battles, you got to go through the wars, and you got to dole out the cash for your kids to get a reasonable breakfast and food and reasonable lunch at school. And if you don't do that, then this is what you get. Obesity. But the book is a great book, and I love the book, but just a little couple criticisms about it. I give it a 7 out of 10. All right, that's Truck Driver 101. This is a break, break 19. You can go on... Uh, Talk Driver on YouTube, Talk Driver, and you can find my other Break 19s there, or you can go to truckdriver101.com and find my Break 19s on my YouTube. It's in a uh, uh, playlist. But Talk Driver is where all the Break 19s are now. All right, guys, have a good one.